if you hit that subscribe button, that notification bell, you're going to be missing out on videos and free prizes and raffles we have coming up. Action. <laughs> hey, we're going to make a quick little video uh, showing you how to balance uh, a wheel and tire. We just got the Connie Attack uh, tires mounted up for the R6 for our track day this weekend. We're going to be mounting uh, these uh, DOT track tires, and then we got set slicks too. Same process no matter what you're doing if you're going to use a gravity balancer like this. So we thought I'd talk a little bit more of the deep dive of what to do and what not to do. So one of the first things I want to start out with is when you put these cones in, it's on a tapered cone here, and you really want to get these really tight. If they're loose, what will happen is this can wobble around, and you're going to find it be really hard to, uh, to balance. All right, I'm gonna show you how to put the cones in here. What you wanna do is you wanna have the wheel somewhat centered in the, in the shaft here. This last one, I always leave one of these tight. The, the Bike Master stand comes with the Allen wrench too here. But tighten that up, make sure it's not gonna move. And then you're gonna see, I'm gonna go ahead and put it through. And the reason I want that tight is I can't access the Allen screw. But here, here's the thing that makes all the difference and why I feel like this will save you a lot of trouble. Uh, mount these let's go ahead and put the weight on that okay because what we're doing is we want these cones to tighten up and you're going to see here on this one there's actually a needle bearing under here so i have the inner race in there and then go ahead and get that on there and then what you want to do is really just pull up as tight as you can while kind of pushing down and then wiggle this around and what will happen is those those two cones as you just kind of wiggle everything around, will basically center themselves into, into those uh, races. I mean, everything's steel, so then I'll go ahead here. I think I'm good, but I'm gonna double check, okay? I, I got a little play in that. I'm, I'm not against trying to tighten it up one more time. So go here, tighten that up. There. Yeah, now I'm tight. Okay, so then I'd simply there, and then I'd be ready to balance it. Uh, you notice I have the sprocket carrier with the rubber dampeners off here. I'll see a lot of people try to balance with that on there. And if you're supported on that bearing on the sprocket carrier that's not rigid, that'll give you some trouble too. So I am directly against the bearings and seals and spacers in the wheel to get this uh, to be really rigid. The other thing is this Bike Master balancer here has a bubble on it, so we've got that level to, um, to the earth as well so that we're not creating any problems. That's the, the first initial steps I could say is make sure that you're, you're fitted up well. This doesn't matter where it sits on here. It's just gonna sit on here. You wanna make sure that it spins fine. The other thing is you're gonna, I highly recommend that when you change a tire to leave the old wheel weights on as long as they're on there firm. So I do have the old wheel weights on here. And the reason I say that is you might just get lucky that it's balanced. So why would you take them off, okay? That's Continental tire, there's no balance dot on here. So you just spoon the tire on. And then uh, uh, we've got other videos we did that you'll, you'll see coming out too, as far as direction and so on and so on. So. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and just start to show you how uh, to balance this. There's a couple different tools that you're gonna want. Uh, I use some uh, crappy duct tape to figure out where I want my weight. You'll see that in a second. You might have an old selection of old weights that uh, got cut short to size. Those are nice to put on here, like I said, with this duct tape, and then just figure out how much weight you need versus taking brand new weight and continually just cutting it up and taking the adhesive off. So that's why you wanna use that duct tape. Um, I've got some goo gone. I'm going to take the old adhesive off. Uh, you're going to notice that when I get done, I'm going to black duct tape this because it's a race bike. So I like to tape over the wheel weight. I don't want to rely just on the adhesive here. I want this to stay put. I don't want it bouncing off someone's uh, helmet or off someone's windshield on the street. So due diligence there. That's the way I do it. Some people don't like the duct tape. Uh, the other tools I have... Uh, I, I happen to have enough left. I like these lead weights uh, because they cut really nice. And then it also allows me to even get just a quarter of a weight or half of a weight. These are all quarter ounce, so I get a, you know an eighth of an ounce, if you will. But um, I like the lead. They're the ones I prefer. These happen to be, we just had these out here. They're the Harbor Freight ones. They're steel. Doesn't, it doesn't matter because you're adding weight. It's just that these are harder to cut with a pair of side cutters. 
uh, and get into those little uh, half steps, if you will. So I have those. The other thing you might want, uh, I got some 409 to clean the wheel. And then uh, I wish I had an actual tire chalk. I don't, I just got this welding stick so that you could make some reference lines or whatnot if you're trying to remember where your weight needs to go. All right, so there's just the starting tips. Now we're gonna go ahead and balance this tire. So as this tire sat here, it's not anything that's real terrible. The heavy spot has already fallen to the bottom while we've been talking. But since I have it on here, one thing I wanna do is I just wanna check it out because this will help me check the bearings. If I see something crazy going on, it means I have the setup wrong or I might have a, a bad wheel bearing. The other thing I'm gonna do, why don't we come to this side? Since I'm on here, this isn't a terrible idea to go in here. And since this is a, a wheel truing stand as well, I'm not gonna lock this down. I'm gonna have a pretty big uh, gap distance in between here, but I'm just gonna go ahead and see if that rotor appears to be true. If I want to get really particular, I could go ahead and put a dial indicator on there, but I could tell with my eye that this, this rotor is pretty good and straight. Um, I could go ahead here, now that I know that they're not going to physically make contact, and go ahead and, like I said, I'm just eyeballing. I'm looking for problems. If, if that rotor were bouncing all over, once again, it might not be the rotor. It might be how you have this set up on the wheel bearings or you have bad wheel bearings. So that's kind of neat to take advantage of the Bike Master's uh, you know, truing stand capabilities and uh, check things out, right? I want to give a shout out to my friend Nadine here. Thank you for coming and helping and hanging out at the shop today. Appreciate you. Okay, so we've got some, like I said, we got the old weights on here and the wheel's looking good. So I'm like, yep, tire doesn't have any hop to it at all. Great job, Continental. Let's go ahead and do this. So what we're going to do, the way I break this up, and I could do this lightning fast, is I'm going to, and, and people say, well, let me back up here a second. People say, oh, you know, you need to have your your uh, your wheels uh, dynamically balanced with electronic balance or whatnot. I mean, this is the way they balance them at the racetrack. Like everybody you see doing it at the track, use a gravity balancer. They wouldn't be racing, you know, 180, 190, 200 mile super bikes doing it this way if it just plain didn't work. So don't be afraid of these. Just telling you. Okay, so how I'm gonna do this really fast is I'm gonna basically break this wheel into four quadrants, if you will. And that's how I'm gonna kind of focus on things. So since the last person had weight here, that meant that the heavy spot before was below or 100% opposite that weight, because that's what we're doing. We find the heavy spot, we put weight opposite to compensate that. Another reason for leaving the weight on there, right? And seeing if you get lucky. But just out of curiosity, what I'll do is I'm gonna use that weight as a reference instead of marking it. And I'm gonna go ahead and start to break into my quadrants. If I go to that side, notice the wheel just barely is starting to turn this direction. So that means that heavy spot is wanting to come down. No sense in waiting all day. I don't need to wait for it to get there. Go ahead, go 180. Now, what we should see happen is that it starts to rotate up the other way. And this, this wheel, a lot of people would ship this, to be honest with you. We're gonna make it better, but uh, you notice that it's going that way. Then I'll go ahead and I'll just go to the middle, right? And we know that that heavy spot's gonna anchor down here. Now, this is the one where you're gonna start to fine tune it. So we, we know the wheel's wanting to go that way, right? But when it's here, it wants to go this way. So somewhere in between here and here is that heavy spot opposite it down here. So what I'll do is I'll just split it up. So here, and notice I'm getting just the littlest bit of rock there. I could just fine tune it, move it around. You're gonna find that point, which is right here. This is the heavy spot, okay? So I'm not happy with it. I'm not, I don't wanna, to fix this right now means this is the heavy spot, right? Okay, it means I'd be adding more weight up here and, and I'd rather just start over at this point than adding more weight to this. Because what may happen, there's three, there's three chunks of weight on here. These look to be quarter ounces too. There's three chunks on here, but the, the thing that might fix this is still three chunks, but just move to a different spot. So three quarters of an ounce, if you will, right? Uh, it may take four, but the re some people will say, oh, well then why, Shane, why wouldn't you just add one? Why wouldn't I just come up here and add one and see if it fixes it? Problem is just one doesn't stick on there very good. But if I know that I need four, okay, 
So that means I, once I figure this out what I need, that means I would cut four off and I got that one single piece of adhesive versus that tiny little piece. Make sense? Okay, all right. So out of curiosity, what we'll do here, we'll just take our junky duct tape here and we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna, let's see, we found our spot was somewhere around there. I'm just gonna add, just for pure curiosity reasons, to see what one little weight would do for us, okay? I don't, like I said, I'm not adhesive it. And one's not enough, it's still coming there. So what happens is, let's just go to two. This is why it's really nice to keep your old ones, right? I can go pretty lightning fast and just figure out what do I need. So if I go here, now look at where I put that two. It's really throwing it off. Now it's mo it's it's too much weight, and it's taken it all the way to the bottom. So it's probably somewhere like one and a half, right? This is this is where it's just so nice to play around with some junk weight so that you can get that get that right spot. But let's do this. I'm gonna go ahead, another little tool, I got a little plastic uh, knife here, if you will. Go ahead, get these off. I'm gonna save these, because they're gonna go in my, my little spares for using it for weights. Okay. And uh, we're just gonna see what happens with no weight now. Okay, it's really wanting to go that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and let it go that way. It wants to come back here. I'm gonna go back to where the weight was. It's still wanting to go that way. Let's speed it up. And sometimes you gotta be careful. What was happening is it really wanted to go that way, but as I took my hands off, I don't know, could you see that? Where I actually started to pull it back and then I give myself a false indication of what direction to go. It's coming this way, let's help it. It's coming this way, coming this way. Okay, now it wants to go back that way. So our heavy spot is right here, right? So what I wanna do is come right across the middle up here and I'm gonna go right here, okay? And that's where I wanna put weight. And so my mark right here, the next question is how much weight do I wanna put? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take I want to use the same spares as like I have. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut four because I most likely think that I'm going to be less than four. So that allows me to cut this down. And I'm somewhere right in there. There's about the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get myself a chunk. Nadine, you're going to do the next wheel? Okay. Huh? Okay. Okay, seems to like that. So now, member fours, quadrants. Okay, I go here. Four is a little heavy. Do you see how it's rolling through? If I go here, what I if four is heavy, what I expect is it still wants to keep going down. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so that's cool. We know anywhere we go, we're a little bit heavy. Okay, but we're in the right we're in the right spot. So now what we can do, just for purposes of education, I'm gonna go three. I'm gonna be pissed if I should have went three and a half though, because then I just wasted a chunk, right? And remember me say, saying at the beginning of the video, the reason I like these lead ones is I can go a half step. <sighs> And here's another thing people get in trouble. They go here and then they go, oh, yeah, okay, quit, versus do your do your 90s. <laughs> What's it need? Four was too much. Three. Probably a half. Yeah. So I need three and a half. And I think I said about a minute ago I'm gonna be pissed if I don't just cut a three and a half, right? Okay. So if if we're right and it wants more weight than that. It's it's going back up. So God dang it. So here's what I'm gonna do. Can you can you see here? I'm gonna go ahead. Here's so here's my 
I'm a double check. I'm a double check. Okay. okay. I really, 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 really think it needs know. three and a half. But hey, you know what? It's pretty cheap right now to just double check. Okay. Like I said, 90% of the world would have shipped this a long time ago. We're going to make it perfect. Okay, it's dropping. What I'm going to I'm going to try and cheat here for a second. I'm not cheat. I'm going to try and play. I'm going to move up a hair. Mm. I'm just going to take my 4 and try and move up and see what happens. We are splitting hairs right now on this balance, right? But it is a track bike and we do have some big goals. Okay, it doesn't like that. If it kind of likes that, kind of likes that, but let's see. Here. See if I, if I go right past, all I did is I found a spot that between the grease and the bearings and the sticks and everything, it went, nah, I'll go ahead and sit here. But you want to, when you're balanced, you should be able to put this anywhere and it not rotate, right? So we've basically proven to ourselves that it's three and a half, I think it's going to be the winner. So I'm going to go here. Okay. Three and a half. And stick it back on. And go back here. Give us See, where was my mark? My mark for dead middle is about right there. We'll just go in here. Okay, you see what I'm saying? I think you split the hair, yeah. So we did. We made it really, really perfect. But it's really just that simple. Uh, I'll put some links below to this. These are really inexpensive as well now, too. And this is actually a more uh, advanced version because it has the wheel chewing capability. All right, my friends. Obviously, the last step is that we go ahead and clean all this old adhesive off. I talked about that. We're going to do a good job. We're going to get this wheel good and cleaned uh, and get it prepped so that I could take off the backing off the actual weight itself, install it correctly. Once again, we're going to uh, throw some black duct tape on there and then we'd call it a day, but I'm not gonna talk or anything. stops away with your package. Hmm? 10 stops away with your package. I'm going to go ahead and go to the inside too instead of being out here because something could hit it and knock it off. Okay. Makes sense? Yep. Double checking. Okay. Are you happy? Good stuff. Oh, I'm gonna need scissors for this. They're back up on the shelf. This is the no no joke duct tape. It's gorilla. It is gorilla. doing is 
hugging the tape down instead of just letting you have a big old air gap. <laughs> I want to give a big shout out to uh, Continental, especially for being a channel sponsor. Um, and hopefully now you've got some tips on how you can uh, get your tire yourself, get them mounted up yourself, balance them yourself, uh, not have to rely on anybody to do that. And if you're a shop that's looking to build your skill sets, maybe you learned something out of this video too that made you a little faster and stronger on how to, uh, how to balance these wheels. So if you haven't done so yet, please make sure and hit that subscribe button. Uh, join the channel as a way to support us and say thanks. Um, as always, we're going to get back at it and keep wrenching. So hope you have a great day and you keep wrenching as well.